My name is John Morley, um, founder and managing director of uh, Johns & Co. We're delighted to, to be Johns & Co. We're delighted to be the um, nominated and recommended uh, lettings and management agent for, for Royal Wharf. Um, since founding the company um, nearly four years ago, um, we've developed an ethos which is very customer focused and customer care focused. In a, in a previous life, I worked with, with Ballymore, who've, who've built this project with um, Oxley in a joint venture, and I headed up the international sales. So I've, I've got, had a, a great understanding of what was involved in, in large scale developments. And what I found was that we had fantastic land, great marketing, um, exceptional sales ability and, and, and uh, the customer care on that part of it was, was, was very, very well orchestrated right through to, um, I suppose, the legals. But once completion happened, we just felt that you know, something a little more could be done and, and, and that's when I decided to, to leave Ballymore and set up Johns & Co. Um, you, you'll see it becomes apparent throughout my um, presentation here um, what that ethos is uh, and it, it, it's basically based on very local support for, for landlords such as yourself. Uh, we don't have call centers, we don't have big head offices, we keep everything as, as local as we can to, to the developments uh, uh, specific. Um, we have offices currently across London. Royal Wharf will be our seventh um, uh, um, office in, in London. Um, we have We've done uh, the template that we're about to roll out for Royal Wharf. Um, you know, we've, we've, we've carried that out in Embassy Gardens, uh, up in West Hampstead, in Wapping, uh, and around Canary Wharf, and some of those developments that are listed. And um, it's very much uh, based on having um, the core team from, from, from the lettings process, sales, client accounting, um, and you name it, under the one roof on the development. Um, our office will open in March 2017, 3,000 square foot, um, a really top class fit out. You wonder why that's important? Well, it shows our intent from day one. And if our fit out is uh, of a standard that exceeds all expectations, well, it should attract the type of clientele and the landlords that, that um, this development expects. And uh, there's no point having beautiful, uh, beautifully appointed apartments that, that you paid a lot of money for if you're not attracting the right kind of clientele. Uh, so in the, in the offices, as I said, we have, of course, our lettings team, our sales teams, the property management, renewals teams, accounts, uh, and, and I suppose the important thing for you to understand is they're all local to this development. They're not working on other developments. Every, every office we have is specific to a development that investors have, have bought into. Um, we, we feel that's a, that's a template that's worked very, very well for us. Um, until uh, the office opens in March 2017, we will have a temporary office, which will be based on the development, right beside the concierge, um, where we'll be able to cater for, for all your needs. Royal Wharf itself, uh, the anticipation completions, just, just to give a, a, an overview of that, and obviously you guys are, are very aware of this, 40 townhouses uh, in 2016, they're, they're, they're being handed over as we speak, Barrier, Meridian, Admiralty, and uh, Maritime. 148 apartments in Endeavour, and the first townhouse is now on the market, um, and I'm sure the, the landlord or owner of, of that apartment is here amongst you. Um, we have that on the market, and, 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 and viewings are going well, and we're getting very positive feedback uh, so far after you know, less than 10 days on the market, less than a week, actually. Uh, what's to come, and, and these are very important when I, when I explain um, what's coming in the next slide in terms of the barriers and, 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 and the things that, that need to be 100% to, to make your rental proposition successful. You know, the clubhouse, obviously you bought into this development, you know more, just as much as I do, what's in there, the 25 meter pool, the hydro pool, sauna, steam room, leisure space, indoor centers, refreshments, uh, relaxment area, state of the art, exercise equipment, and personal training assessment hub. Um, we have been told this week about the other amenities that are in there. Sainsbury's, uh, a leading coffee chain, a dry cleaners, a, a, a pub which we're told, which we would guess be something like, a, like Young's pub, that, you know, good food and, and, and beer, of course. Um, restaurants, doctor's surgery, 24 hour security concierge, secure parking, and the park, which is in the middle of the development. Um, the tenant demographic that we've identified and we've got a lot of experience in this area with London City Island um, only 
a few miles, or maybe even two miles towards Canary Wharf. Um, the demographic will, con will be in the region of 25 to 30 year olds, families I suppose for the, for the bigger units, two, three beds, the larger two beds, three beds, and of course uh, the townhouses which are completing at the moment. Uh, professional sharers and couples, be the individuals, couples, or professional sharers looking for the kind of accommodation that's provided by Royal Wharf. What to expect in year one? And the first year of any large-scale development, there, there, there are lots of, of challenges, but there's lots of positives to take from each one. Um, quite an aggressive completion schedule of 30 units per week. Um, it's a big development, and on the back of that, you know, we, we expect um, to get a, a for, quite a large coverage on the amount of units that, that will be available to rent. Approximately 70% of the development has been bought by buy to let investors. The speed of occupancy uh, should be the focus in year one rather than the initial yield. You know, that's, that's the same as every new build development until cranes come down and, and hard hats disappear. Um, it's all about getting it rented out and, and realizing increases in your rental thereafter on the back of the things I just described a minute ago. All those amenities, all those retailers, as and when they come in, that all adds value. So, you know, after six months maybe, but certainly after a year, you, sh you should start to expect and demand uh, price increases annually from, from us, your uh, lettings agent. Um, high quality furnishings will aid the speed of your lettings. People ask all the time, you know, will, will, will the furnishings, um, will we get greater rent for the, for the, if we have a, a furnished apartment? The answer is, not really, but if you don't furnish it in, in the London market, it will sit around for a lot longer and the void, peri void periods are proven to be greater um, when they're not furnished. So uh, once again, you know, those void periods are what kill your investment and, and by not doing the, the correct things from the, from the start uh, will eat into your uh, returns. Um, ongoing building works will unfortunately equate to the inevitable dust and noise issues. Um, once again, that, that, that will be reflected in your rents. Um, uh, the size of the development will mean it will take a while uh, to feel like a community once, once those bars and the GP and all those um, very important amenities that, that are underway and it's great to have that, to be able to tell you about those and, and, and certain um, uh, tenants being signed up. The, uh, the leisure facilities are at least 12 months away which again, you know, w will affect it but can only be seen as a positive and, and you'll see the growth in your uh, rental income um, as these things start to mature. Uh, on a positive, just to finish off there on that, uh, all the above issues will, will lessen and ultimately disappear as the development progresses and facilities come online. Uh, in this part of London, the landlord licensing in, in the borough of Newham is, is, is quite an important thing for you all to be aware of, um, more so than, than anywhere else that we operate. Um, property Ra uh, licenses range for landlords in the region of 150 to 1,000 pound, depending on the, the, the type of occupant that, that moves in. Um, the consequences of not licensing are up to 20,000 pound fines. Uh, can evict your tenant without a license if the license is not in place? Um, and the rent payment order, uh, the council can order you to pay up to 12 months rent um, to your tenant. So it's excessive and, and it needs to be really taken seriously. Um, this is something landlords can do themselves and we've only had meetings very recently internally in, in Johns & Co on how, how we aid our landlords to do that. Um, and we're more than happy for landlords to do that. But however, with the repercussions of not doing it properly, we're there to help and there is a, a, a very small uh, administrative fee to do that but based on the, the repercussions of not doing it right, um, it's completely up to yourself. So if you want to read, the, if I read this paragraph, John's going, we're in contact with Newham Council uh, regarding the landlord licensing process. It's an administration minefield, and that's what we believe, uh, including providing detailed property information, i.e. number of smoke alarms and room size, as well as notifying the freeholder mortgage lenders insurance. And we're happy to help in this process, of course. But um, for the first time, to be introduced to that, it might seem daunting, but you know we, we, we have, we've taken good advice on that and we're talking to them on a regular basis, so we're pretty sure it's a process that's going to get easier and easier uh, as time goes by. Um, I suppose one of the most important things that, that you guys are, are very interested in is, is the, the Royal Wharf lettings market as a whole and, and to look at the general area. Um, we've taken three examples here, which are all on the doorstep of the development, Waterside Park, 
That's the newest comparable to Royal Wharf, approximately 18 months old, and it's just um, on, on the next door on your way to City Airport, if you like. Capital East, which is closer to the Excel, uh, most of the similar developments in size and facilities will be between 2004 and 2007. Barrier Point is the closest uh, geographically, however, you know, the condi conditions vary greatly. So it, 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 it's a development that's beginning to look tired and um, a comparable geographically, but that's about it, I think. Then if you want to look down here and we look at the, the, the three with, ba with Royal Wharf included, um, you can see the rents, so comparables um, for Barrier Point, 300 to 350 per week for one beds, 360 to 425 for two beds and 475 to 550 for three beds. Waterside Park, like Barrier Point, doesn't have studios. Um, so 330 per week, two beds 345 to 520 per week, and three beds 450 to 550 per week. Capital East, which is the middle one in the image, it's 250 to 300 per week, uh, one beds 270 to 385, two beds 340 to 600, and three beds 525 to 750. Now the important one, Royal Wharf, uh, we see the studios starting from 275 per week and um, 315 for one beds, 390 for two beds and 500 for three beds. Uh, you know, we said starting from because it's such a, a large development, there, there are lots of variables, you know, proximity to construction, um, maybe views of the river, just where they are, the sizes of course, and then there's increments, um, we apply increments based on the views which ultimately are uh, derived from the level in which that apartment is. Um, as we said, 75% of the 18 to 24 year olds in London prefer to rent a partly or wholly furnished property. Um, and a, a furniture pack can be a cost effective way to let your property swiftly for higher rent. You know, obviously the, the the higher grade the furniture, um, you'd expect to get a higher rent, but ultimately, if you have no furniture at all, you can expect quite uh, qu quite nasty void periods from our experience. Um, we've, we've had to think outside the box um, greatly around this part of London. As you can see, there's cranes everywhere. Um, there are lots of developments coming on. Granted, we found that anything that, that, that Ballymore are involved in, it seems to be one step ahead of the competition in terms of offering with uh, you know, the finishes, the bathrooms, the kitchens, uh, the lifestyle, and just down to the estate management is, is always one step ahead. That said, you know, there are a lot of rental opportunities out there for people that are in the market. So we came up with a concept called Custom Furnished by Johns & Co, which I, I'll talk about in a little more detail at the end of this slide, I have another slide. And um, it, it's effectively giving a choice at no extra cost to the landlords for the tenants to choose one of four, um, uh, four packs, if you like. So we, we have four different packs, four different styles, and we found it very successful. We trialed it in, in London City Island uh, this year, and it's really caught the eye of, of um, uh, the tenant profile who haven't ever experienced the opportunity to rent off plan, if you like, and then have a decision in which pack they, they, they put in. So and it doesn't cost the landlord anything extra. <clears throat> of course, the, the portals, I don't need to tell you that, you know, right move, Zoopla, et cetera, are all critical. And events, you know, we, as you see tonight, we, we don't spare on, on, on events. We think they're very important. We've got a good following, be it on the, the um, landlord or um, side like yourselves or more the retail side like um, the tenants would call them more the retail side. We, we've got a following. We have events. Um, Networking is very important. And you'd be surprised... Uh, how well we do out of those kind of events to generate tenants. Okay. This is just some of the coverage we have. We've got a very strong PR team. Uh, we, you know, we're not all about marketing an individual apartment like you'd see in the newspapers. We, we'd like to market um, developments as new areas to live. So um, new destinations to come and, and, and experience. Uh, and then when we get those people down and they see and they like the development and they like the amenities and like the finishes, then we can hone them down into individual apartments. It's just a different way of looking at it and that, that's what we tend to do and it works quite well. And PR backs that up greatly. Obviously, we're, we're, we're not naive. We understand that it's a vast, vast development. It's, it's one of the big, it is the biggest um, in, in, in London. Um, 
just look at the model here in front of me, you know, my God, we know the task ahead. Uh, on the back of that, we have put in very, very strong incentives um, to engage with the other big companies around, especially around Canary Wharf heading east because th th they're the most dominant and it's probably the most dominant dr demographic in terms of tenant pool. So I'm Chestons, JLL, CBRE, Hamptons, of course, we have a good relationship with Knight Frank already. Um, we use these guys, they've got corporate relocation departments, um, immobilization departments, they're, they're, we've got fantastic working relationships with them. They, they bring us and we, we look after them very well. We're, we're not greedy, we're, we, we prefer to sacrifice a right big chunk of our fee just not to have your apartment stagnate you know, it'll benefit everybody in the long run, business will come back to us the year after, etc. So um, we, we really have uh, left no, no, no uh, stone unturned. Property management is possibly one of the most important things for you guys. Not on the forefront, obviously you think letting it out is, but really if it's managed poorly, you know, it doesn't matter who let it out, okay? Um, we've we, we've got a huge emphasis on property management. As I said earlier, no call centers. Our property managers do not need to drive anywhere or go to train anywhere to solve problems. They literally need to get into an elevator and go to the apartment because our offices are based on the development on site. Um, we have a cutoff point of 120 apartments per property manager. Your more traditional state agencies might have 150 and those property managers have to commute maybe across London to visit this apartment to do inspections or to sort out a problem that might happen. So we've eradicated that. And, and also our, our property managers are trained up to do the simplest of tasks that a screwdriver or a spanner can do, trying to eliminate the need to call out a, a contractor at every given opportunity, which once again, it just erodes your investment. Okay. Uh, we do four routine inspections each year. I don't think anybody else in London does that. Nobody else in London could afford to do that because they're not as close to the properties as we are. Uh, home demos, we're not just about satisfying keeping the landlords happy. We think that's only half the job. Um, it's very important to us to keep the tenants happy as well. Um, so when they, when they sign up, we do a home demo with them, our property managers. Once again, this isn't done anywhere else in London. Our property managers meet the tenant once it's been let. It's handed over from the lettings agent and a full home demo is done to understand the heating, hot water, you name it. And that reduces call-outs as well. Uh, handovers for owners fr um, from developers. We thought this would be three, four years ago on setting up Johns & Co. We thought this would be predominantly for uh, our overseas investors, but uh, we've been quite surprised that, you know, and we shouldn't have been surprised because people in London and the UK lead very busy lives as well. So we actually do a lot of, 90% of our landlords, we do the handover on their behalf with the landlord, or with the developer, sorry. We coordinate all the, inst the furniture install, um, which is something that can be a real pain uh, for landlords if they take it on themselves. It's no extra cost. We've got the guys on site, and for us, it's a very easy thing to do. Uh, all our staff are, are qualified, and a huge thing is the free rent and legal protection. Um, I suppose if any landlord was to acquire such a, a, a policy themselves, you could be talking anywhere from 200 to 500 um, pound uh, for the premium. W this is something that we have insured our company, Johns & Co., as a whole, and we can offer it then to our landlords. So um, it, it's very unique. You, you, uh, you won't get this anywhere else. Um, you know, any kind of uh, litigation that happens or, or back, back rents that haven't been paid, any struggles that go to court, it, it's, it's fully com uh, covered. And the most important thing to note is there's no excess. So lots of these policies, even the cheap, probably more the cheaper ones, th there's such um, excessive excesses that um, really you'd be questioning why you got it in the first place. Sales, we, we, we've got a very strong sales team. Obviously, you know, you've got Mike Frank here and they're here in the room tonight and, and, and they sold to you and they're, they're selling properties here in the development uh, all the time. Uh, from time to time, we have... Um, people that set out to be landlords and, and, and wish now to sell, maybe out of necessity or maybe they've seen an opportunity. Um, generally, the conversations we have with lots of people is that it, it's, it's not a good time to sell. It's a buyer's market at the moment, certainly, but the, um, the sales aspect and assignments are, are tricky. And we do have a team there that help people out that, that, that want to sell, but um, 
certainly in a development like this, to realise the true potential, um, you'd, you'd really need to see this development through a bit more before you'd, you'd look at selling it because there's so much to happen here between the, the, the club and, and the shops, the amenities, and just, just getting rid of the, the aspect of construction. I think um, anybody we've spoken to, it's, just, it's a real shame if, if you wanted to sell this early in the process. But like that, we, we, we are helping a lot of people to, to do that if they need to or, or really, really want to. Uh, I touched on customer furnished earlier, um, and this is our, our new initiative. Um, so much so, and it's gone so well in London City Island that we've we've trademarked the custom furnished um, co concept, or, or at least the logo. Um, you've got the, the New York, Geneva, Paris, and Tokyo collections. Um, this has been huge for creating awareness for London City Island, and we expect it to be huge to create awareness amongst uh, the tenant. Uh, profile throughout London uh, at, at Royal Wharf. Um, once again, you know, you look at such things as, as uh, Mini and BMW or Nike ID or these different websites where you click and bespoke your own accessories before they're delivered online. It's not quite there yet. Um, obviously, there's just four options, but that's that's the kind of thing that we're trying to bring into to, into the marketplace for for tenants. And you know, I think everyone's aspiration is to own, but I think their aspiration of ownership. Um, doesn't really kill them so much renting when they think they've got a little bit of say in, in the kind of furniture. Once again, all collections for the landlords are the same cost. Um, so you're, you're buying one of the four. You just don't know necessarily which one of the four are going to be installed. That decision is left with the tenant if you choose to go that route. Um, it's been very popular so far and none of the packages are very, they're all, they're all relatively inoffensive. Um, None of them are hated by any landlords particularly, so um, it's just something that works. It's just a little bit of information about that. Um, custom furnished studios um, with flat included, 4,000. Furniture is not our game. It's just something that's very important that you guys furnish well to allow us to, to, to rent the property for you. One beds are uh, 5,575, excluding VAT. Two beds, 6,850, and three bedrooms, uh, 8,450. This is just this is the New York package, to Geneva, Tokyo, and Paris. Um, if you want to take, if you see some of you are taking photos, take a photo of this, or we'll have it back up at the end of the, the next presentation. Um, by all means, email us. We can send you this uh, slideshow, no problem. And um, up next is Stephen Brown, who is a tax advisor. I'd like to thank you all for listening to me. I hope I didn't go on too long. Um, just a few people here that I want to tell you about in case you're, you're looking for them. Uh, so Kelly Beach's completion team are here. Okay, I'm sure some of you have been in contact with them all. We've got Charlotte, Chloe, Laura, and Georgie. Uh, Georgie, obviously, part of the sales team. Um, Dave Phillips Furniture, who, who supply the, the packages and the custom furniture they spoke to you about. Uh, they're here as well in the form of Kath and Dan. Uh, the Ballymore sales team are here. If you get tempted by any more after seeing how well this development is going, if you, if you want to buy any more. And, of course, the Johns & Co. team have named badges and we're floating around uh, all evening. So please just approach us. Any questions you might have, we're here to help and here to answer. Okay. Thank you.